Welcome back. So, we, we were talking about the sticky price model, the Neve Keynesian model and we will continue further in this particular uh, topic and we will try to understand that how certain dimensions can also be added and can also be understood with the help of, of uh, certain conditions. For example, what happens when we have the liquidity trap? Uh, in the last session, we also discussed about what happens when we have the the constant productivity increase, if you have persistent uh, productivity increase. We will be also seeing in today's session uh, about the, uh, the further I would say criticisms of the New Keynesian model. So, under that we will try to understand that uh, whether the conventional monetary policy or the unconventional monetary policy will help us decide. In this particular uh, context, uh, just to recap things, uh, we have already discussed that the money is not neutral in the Keynesian setup, which means that monetary policy is evolving within the system and, and it is a very obvious uh, uh, argument that if you have the monetary policy independent, then it may happen that we are examining the, the monetary policy independent of the economic output, whatever are the economic scenarios. Here in this case, uh, as per the new Keynesian school, they assume that if you have a monetary policy change, for example, rate of increase or decrease in the policy rate, then it happens that the banking sector gets also the boost and they also have the good businesses. And there is some kind of interlink between the, uh, the central bank policy rate change and the banking or financial sector outlook. So, if everything is dependent upon each other, then we cannot think about making a uh, monetary policy as exogenous variable that we have seen in case of neoclassical or even in case of classical. Here the liquidity trap or the, the condition in which the, uh, the money and the, the government bonds become the substitute, perfect substitute. So, in that situation how the new Keynesian model will react. In the last session also we had highlighted about to what extent we can uh, understand the real business cycle analysis and how we can, uh, we can say that whether the new Keynesian school of economic uh, thought is trying to prove something differently than the new classical or is it the same. The idea behind this, uh, uh, this uh, session is that if we are having the sticky price situation, right, in the short run we are not assuming any price change then how the model looks like. And in short run, we also have certain dimensions about the, the aggregate output change, the natural rate of interest change. So, if you have those kind of, of changes happening, then how we can understand or make the policy stand better, in what context we can add the dimension. So, more or less we will be uh, ha have having discussion around these things and I hope it will be easier for all of you to understand. So, the reference book remains same. Here we have the Stephen D. Williams and we will be also adding one more book, the Man Q and in that we will be trying to see from the dynamic aggregate demand aggregate supply perspective. Otherwise, the major textbook remains same is Stephen D. Williams. Right? So, here we have the new Keynesian model with sticky prices, how money is not neutral. So, it remains same, nothing much change. In the last session, we, we were talking about the sticky price model and under that we talked about certain dimensions uh, regarding how we can uh, understand. So, here in case of Keynesian setup, the model looks very simple that uh, when it, it looks very smooth in the sense that when we assume certain uh, aspects about the economy, then it, it works like if you have money supply increase, then this it means that it leads to decrease in rate of interest. Once you decrease in rate of interest, then it creates a better investment scenarios. As a result, you have the, the consumption scenarios also boosting because individuals will be looking for more consumption as compared to future or if the rate of interest is lower, then, then the individuals will not be trying to, to save more. So, which means that it also creates the demand immediately in the economy and everything comes on track. So, in terms of economic recovery, one of the major advantages is this. Second thing is that if you are having the, 
stabilization scheme through fiscal policy which means that either you have decrease in taxes or some kind of subsidies being offered or the government is taking a stand through some transfers. So, if you have that kind of transfer then it matters a lot that how you have the revival of the economy taking place, how the government is, is trying to uh, trying to take forward the growth and progress in the economy. So, stabilization in the sense that if you have any shock, the unexpected shock coming into the system and it disturbs the whole equilibrium pattern in labor market, in money market, in goods market, then how we can bring back towards equilibrium. So, the idea is that the fiscal policy alone mm, will not be eff efficient enough to bring equilibrium in the economy you will have to combine with the monetary policy. So, if you are just relying on the government then it may happen that you will have the rate of interest increase, the, the price will also shoot up. So, if price is going to shoot up then of course, the central bank will also react. Uh, and then if you have the, the government expenditure only participating through the higher borrowing then that will also create further trouble. So, that may be linked with the, the borrowing scenario that we had that previous period bond issued will have sub, some carry forward for the future period. So, in that context it becomes important. Here the idea is that if you have no change in monetary policy which means that if government is not intervening anything. So, productivity shock creates a, a very uh, good scenario. So, there will be a rightward shift in aggregate demand. This will also create a scenario where you will be at the the uh, aggregate supply shifting rightward. Now, this aggregate supply shifting rightward, so if you have the fixed prices which means that price is fixed. So, money supply here you have M1, S, M1 and here you have M2. So, this shift that you have, so the output gap that we have created without taking any measure. So, your output is just moving from Y1 which is the initial equilibrium point M1 and P1. It is moving to Y3 without any interference in the in the policy. But if government, if the central bank takes the decision, if the government takes the, the, the decision about the increase in money supply, then this, this brings the output. Uh, so, rate of interest will be low, lower, output will increase. So, the output gap without any policy stand is Y3, right. So, so Y3 minus Y2 is the output gap and this can be only filled when you have the monetary policy stand taking place. So, more or less if you think from the new Keynesian and new classical perspective, it remains same, not much change. The adjustment uh, scenarios are more or less same and that is why in the textbook when you read then you find that the real business cycle understanding and even the new Keynesian school understanding are having the similar kind of outcomes and that is why there is not so much debate and discussion on this particular topic. So, real business cycle considered as the, the new classical idea and it remains in the macroeconomics literature and it is well accepted, uh, accepted postulate that this uh, supply side uh, scenarios also matter, labor market equilibrium does matter, if your productivity increase then, then this will create a better scenarios for the labor market as a result the wage rate will shoot up, there will be demand for labor, the investment if you have any policy stand coming from the central bank this will create uh, the scenarios for investment. So, the, the shock to the system when you have persistent uh, productivity increase then this will have positive impact. Such type of scenarios we have already discussed in case of chapter 4 when we are talking about how we can uh, think about uh, certain dimensions about uh, labor and leisure when we have the productivity increasing. That shows that it is more or less in favor of the, uh, the labor uh, uh, standard of living of the labor incre uh, enhances and this brings uh, a more income and further it will add value to the aggregate output. So, in this particular setup what comes out that, so cases are produced exactly the same, so in the same way that we uh, discussed in the previous previous session and the sticky prices which is very strong argument and this is also one of the criticisms of the, the Keynesian school of economic thought that uh, when we talk about sticky prices, then sticky prices are not sticky in the real sense because uh, many times we find that due to technological advancement, 
uh, or I would say better technology availability has, uh, has decreased the chances of not changing the price uh, quickly. So, you have every time, so the menu cost example that I think I discussed also in the last session that in case of menu cost example when we are assuming that if a price change then this then the restaurant owner may not be liking to increase because he or she is facing uh, some kind of uncertainty that whether the uh, the cost involved in in printing of the new menu when they will be able to recover so all those dimensions are well accepted but when we are talking about the technological change the market acceptance then most of the the restaurant or food chains they often go for uh, a regular change in their menu so they have to update every time not with just pricing but also with the items they sell so those are the conditions under which we can always think about having a some kind of a very ambiguous understanding about stickiness so maybe for a very short period this could be a, an example but even in the short run we find that uh, it is not very uh, likely that the price will be fixed for a longer period. There will be a chance that prices will be changing quite uh, quickly and this will bring about equilibrium. Now here we have the liquidity trap and the sticky prices in case of liquidity trap we found that when we have the it is also one of the stabilization tools but in case of liquidity trap it happens that monetary policy becomes ineffective and then you have the fiscal policy reviving the economy so you should have the combination or you can go for unconventional monetary policy steps. What are the, those in unconventional monetary policy steps is that you go for negative interest rate, you go for quantitative easing that you have. So, if you have that kind of scenario, how does, so these are the special cases I would say for the new Keynesian school of economic thought and since the Keynesian school of th uh, thought proposed this idea, so they cannot deny that they will not be having such type of scenario and most of the first world economies are having such scenarios. So, we are looking at those dimensions. So, here monetary policy cannot close the output gap at the zero lower bound, so let us understand that. So, before we go for the liquidity trap scenario, we are also, we can also see that how we can understand the credit market imperfections. So, if you remember we were talking about uh, credit market imperfections from the perspective of how we can, uh, how in the financial market the borrowing and lending rates are different, how you have the default. Uh, I would say premium charged by the uh, banks from the good borrower and also from the bad borrower. Then we introduce the concept of, of credit market asymmetry where the lender is having limited information about the borrower. Then we also introduce the concept of limited commitment. What was the concept in the limited commitment? We introduced the idea that when you have the, uh, uh, when the borrower is being asked to surrender some of the valuable assets which has the uh, which has uh, the characteristic that the value of that asset will increase in future if the bank is going to hold then the borrowing capacity of the borrower will depend upon the 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 collateral or the the asset that the borrower is going to surrender if the asset if the asset price is going to go up the borrower will have higher borrowing capacity. If the asset price is going to come down, borrower will have a limited capacity. So, in 2008 when uh, or I would say 2007-8 when we had the global financial crisis and that uh, that started with the, the housing sector in US. So, at that time the credit market asymmetry was linked to the decline in the prices of the collateral. So, if suppose somebody has borrowed the money from the bank by, uh, by putting a house or uh, house as collateral. So, at that time the house, house prices had uh, gone down uh, quite uh, significantly and this had also reduced the borrowing capacity of most of the borrowers and even the banks were facing uncertainty with regard to the regular payment because the macroeconomic scenarios were not that favorable. So, during 2007 at global financial crisis it came out that even subprime borrowers had a very uh, difficult time and this that is why 
it is often called as subprime crisis. So, subprime crisis is one of the important avenues to look at. So, credit market imperfections, how it leads to financial crisis, it works in this way that you have asymmetry, you have larger defaults, larger defaults are further creating uncertainty in the economy. So, you have more pessimistic scenarios. So, maybe you can link it with the with the strategic complementarity that we discussed in last to last session that how you have the 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 strategy complementarity is playing very important role in uh, what we had the theory of coordination failures. So, if you have a coordination failure happening in the economy, so one sector is having higher default in the housing, then this is having further repercussions on the consumer, then further investment and all other. So, your economy is completely in trap. If your economy is completely in trap, then that becomes really difficult to revive. So, in typical cases, what happens that if you have the credit market asymmetry, then what typically happens that you have the lot of pessimism prevailed and this creates the, the downward shift in this. So, here you have R1 and Y1 as the, the initial equilibrium point. What we can see is that here you have the leftward shift in demand. So, if you have leftward shift in demand, and here because there is a lot of asymmetry, you have lot of uncertainty. If this uncertainty is creating more scenario, then uh, the in terms of your labor, labor will be working for more number of hours, right. So, in order to, uh, if they are working for more number of hours, producing more output, you have rightward shift in output supply. But the decrease in demand that you have because of uncertainty will be much higher than the aggregate supply shift. And what happens that the economy moves to a lower side of the economy. So, here your output shrinks, rate of interest also comes down. So, because if the central bank is going to revive, but what typically happens is that your employment will also be lower, right? Because the firm would be willing to supply because they uh, are having the they still hope that the economy may come back because this is not because of the the real side of the economy. It is because of the the credit side of the economy. So maybe the signaling is not uh, passing through easily. So this could be the reason. And here you have N1, N2. Here we can see that the wage rate has gone up, but there are certain uh, I would say unexpected uh, unexpected outcomes in this case that the rate of decrease in output will depend on on how the labor is going to anticipate about the future uh, scenarios in the economy if labor anticipates that this is going to persist for a more period of time they may say that they would not like to work or if it persists, then you have further decrease in demand, further decrease in demand brings slowdown in the economy, slowdown which means that you have lot of inventory uh, or I would say glut kind of uh, scenario, oversupply, price will crash and then this creates a very awkward situation for the economy. But uh, this the wage rate increase is also very uncertain in this case because wage rate increase may not be directly linked uh, because here you, are, here you have N2 S R2. So, credit market imperfections, it is more or less it is linked with the, the asymmetry with the limited commitment problem and this ultimately uh, impacts the macroeconomic outcome by decreasing output and also decreasing the labor supply which means that employment will be lower, wage rate may go up or down but in this case it is up and this could be because the labor is not able to price the fall in the demand due to credit market imperfections. If it is pricing, then this will also be, this will also not be the same scenario. So, this is what we mentioned about credit market imperfections. Now, from here, with this similar kind of setup, we will be putting into the liquidity trap situation. So, here is the liquidity trap situation. Here you have the Y1, right? At this Y1 S and Y1 D, here you have the equilibrium. What we are saying that since it is a liquidity trap situation, so rate of interest is really, really low, right? So, maybe equivalent to 0. So, your real rate of interest is equivalent to 0, which means that uh, since we have already assumed the inflation as 0, right, in real interest rate. So, if nominal interest rate is also equivalent to 0, so you have real interest rate becoming 0, right? Because a real interest rate is nothing but the nominal interest rate minus inflation. We have already assumed in monetary intertemporal model that rate of inflation is going to be 0. 
So, if I am putting a condition that the nominal interest rate is also 0, then it means that real interest rate is going to be 0. So, here you have y 1 scenario, right. If you have the uh, and this y 1 scenario, since we know that at the liquidity trap situation, we are having a, a scenario in which we are having the fixed prices, right. At this uh, point where you have the aggregate demand and aggregate supply moving up and down. So, here we have aggregate demand, aggregate supply. Uh, uh, so, this is the equilibrium point. At this point, the real rate of interest is 0, output is y 1. Now, here we are saying that if the central bank, since the monetary policy is ineffective, so even though if the central bank is thinking about uh, doing something, it will not have any impact, rather it will create output gap. So, economy may move to y 2, right. And this is primarily linked to the ineffectiveness of the monetary policy, less of demand of the money. And since money supply and the bonds both become substitute at the liquidity trap, so people are not so much bothered about the purchasing power of the money. If the central bank wants to correct this output gap, uh, y 2 minus y 1, then this can be linked, uh, this can be done either by two ways. One is that the central bank uh, can pursue the negative interest rate or the unconventional monetary policy. For example, negative interest rate I mentioned uh, in most of the uh, first world countries, this, the government has gone for uh, such type of policies. Second aspect is that they can go by quantitative easing. So, what is the quantitative easing that you have? In case of quantitative easing, the normal scenario is that in the normal setup open market operations, when you go for uh, buying and selling of government assets, government also purchases the long term assets, which means that the stressed asset, uh, it can be also the stressed asset. So, stressed asset means that you are holding a long term bond, but you are not sure that whether you will be able to uh, get uh, or you whether this bond will be able to mature or not. So, central bank purchases that also. So, which means that you have excess supply of money going into the market. Typically, the case is that if you are holding the bond, if you are selling to the central bank, central bank will keep the bond, pay you the money that you have, it, which means that you are going to get extra money. Extra money will be further pumped in the economy. So, in the unconventional monetary policy setup, either you go for the zero lower bound that we have or you go for negative interest rate. Negative interest rate scenario may create uh, a possibility here that people will be discouraged to save money and banks and financial institutions will not be allowed and they will be rather charging, right. So, that kind of situation may help reviving the economy and reducing the output gap between Y2 and Y1. But in normal scenarios, until unless central bank or the government introduces the fiscal policy measures, then only the liquidity trap, trap can be uh, broken and the economy may move out of liquidity trap. In most of the situations, we do not find that kind of, uh, of understanding and we often find that when we have liquidity trap situation, then the, the especially after 2007-8 global financial crisis, the the conventional and unconventional monetary policies have played a very important role. So, this is how it looks like that this is how we operate. So, 0 need not be lower bound in the normal interest rate. So, in case of US economy, what had happened that during 2007 at global financial crisis when there were a lot of uncertainty, central banks had gone for reducing and Fed Reserve had gone for reducing the rate of interest and it was almost like 0 0.25 percent. So, here it is the in most of the countries you will find that for example, Switzerland, Denmark, Euro area, Sweden, Japan has all such type of characteristics with negative. In the new Keynesian model, maybe eliminate the output with a negative normal interest rate, but you can also link it with the fiscal policy scenario if the government is going to take measures. If it increases the government expenditure, then this will further increase the borrowing in the market. And once you have the borrowing in the market, rate of interest will start going up. And the substitution that you have between money and the bond, this will break. And further, the liquidity trap situation may not arise and economy will move. And again, when it moves out of the trap, then there again you have the monetary policy coming into and brings about equilibrium. So, that we always refer it. 
right. So, the, this, this is how it looks like. In case of, uh, of uh, monetary policy and unconventional monetary policy especially, uh, you will find that in most of the countries, you have a different types of policy rates. So, in case of US, you have federal funds rate and then here you have uh, in India, we target the repo rate and reverse repo rate. So, whenever you have the monetary policy stand taking place, then we say that the central bank hovers around these two rates and tries to uh, balance the, the money supply in the economy. So, we will be talking uh, about these things in the, in, in the coming session, the next session. But as of now, the, I hope it is clear that how the, the unconventional monetary policy can be playing important role. And just to conclude now, uh, we have already, already highlighted the new Keynesian. Now, we will be moving towards the uh, new fisherian idea and how the new fisherian ideas uh, play a very important role. But just to conclude the session here, the idea is that we have so far discussed the new Keynesian school of economic thought from a sticky price perspective, which is very stringent assumption. Mm, that is one of the important criticisms. Second thing is about the anticipation that how the uh, role of anticipation may play a very important role uh, uh, like, like new classical, the rational expectation idea. But here in this case, we do not have that much. The role of labor market, uh, which is having a limited role because of the sticky price. So, that is also creating a trouble, but overall with regard to the uh, money supply or monetary policy change or fiscal policy adjustment, one of the beauties of the new Keynesian is that it emphasizes more on balancing both money supply and the fiscal policy, uh, which means either tax rate decrease or increase. So, these are the dimension I hope you are able to understand the fresh water and salt water schools of economic thought. So, fresh water belongs to neoclassical you have salt water coming to New Venetian and these two schools of economic thought bring harmony to the macroeconomic understanding and you are at least follow, you are able to follow the recent development. So, now we will be moving towards the art of monetary policy making and I will be stopping here now. Thank you. Thank you so much for your attention.